Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to this week's segment of Live Without Limits. Today's show is how to develop a money mindset. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this topic today is because when you're in business for yourself, or even if you're working for someone, you need to understand the value of money and how it relates to your time. Innovation is the specific instrument of entrepreneurship, the act that endows resources with a new capacity to create wealth or worth. Wealth, said Peter Drucker. And Peter Drucker came, comes from the around the 1950s and the 1960s and wrote a lot of articles, and and was a very big name in psychology. A man observes evergreens growing along the roadside and thinks the trees look pretty, covered with snow. Another man sees the same trees and thinks, these trees would look good in people's living rooms at Christmas. I wonder what they would pay for them. The first man has an ordinary mind. The second man has the mind of a natural born money maker. You can tell a natural born money maker because of how they think and how they talk. And they tend to be entrepreneurs. The first man has an ordinary mind the second man has the mind of a natural born money maker or entrepreneur. In the Prime Movers, Edward A. Locke provides some interesting insights into the way money makers think. He argues that an active, inquisitive mind is a hallmark of the successful entrepreneur. The most successful entrepreneurs in history, he says, had this sort of mind. Thomas Edison was a virtual thinking machine. Almost until the day he died, his mind poured forth a torrent of ideas, and he might track as many as 60 experiments at a time in his laboratory. Steve Jobs He bombarded people with his ideas, his investors, his board of directors, his customers, his subordinates, and his CEO. The one thing about Steve Jobs, if you remember how he started Apple in his garage, and it was it revolutionized history because what did it do? It put personal computers in every home. Steve Jobs is an idea man. He really did not know how to run a business. That's why when Apple went from a startup to a real corporation, Steve Jobs was pushed out of his company. And then he started the company next, which was eventually bought out and Steve Jobs bought back to Apple. Why was he bought back to Apple? Simple. Apple had peaked in its sales of personal computers and there was no innovation coming into the company to create new products, to expand their product line. In any company, you need to have 
multiple sources of income, which means you need multiple types of products. So when they brought him back, what did he do? He created the iPod, which created digital music, and digital music created iTunes. Then he created the iPad, which is nothing more than a tablet that you can download apps to. And that created another industry of app developers. I once went to MobyCamp, which was a, a meeting of app developers who spent a lot of money creating the apps to be used on the iPhone. Why? Because they knew that if people started downloading and using their apps and that Apple liked their product, they stood to make a lot of money. So what I'm saying here is the money mindset is here's one person who, who took an idea, created it, built a, a whole industry and a new job market for many people just by his innovation and minds. And one of the things that he was working on before he passed away was to get into making televisions. And as you notice, now we have streaming TV, and you can download certain apps, and those apps have certain products that you can use on them that actually you can watch programs from way back in the 60s and the, from the 20th century as television first got off the ground. And you, you have, now you have Netflix and Hulu who also create their own programming. Henry Ford, he threw himself into every detail, insisting on getting small things absolutely right, but he never lost sight of the ultimate overall objection. He had a vision of what his new car, the Model T, should look like from all improv improvisation, hard thought, and hard work came a machine that was at once the simplest and most sophisticated automobile built to date anywhere in the world. Take my friend Bernard. I have a friend, an emigre from Manchester, England, who has the kind of money-making mindset. I have known him for more than 20 years. During that time, he has started at least a dozen successful companies. Every company he forms it seems, becomes successful very quickly. He has become a wealthy man and enjoys a wealthy man's lifestyle, but his interest in making money has never waned. In that respect, he is very different from me. I became wealthy by making plans and working my ass off, and once I made more that I needed, I stopped paying attention to it. He made his money effortlessly, or so it always seemed, and he continues to make money because he really enjoys the process. So think about some of the things that you can do that can help you change your mind and your mindset so that you can gravitate towards earning an income. And here's another thing to think about. Any business you have today has to have an online 
presence. So that what's happened is it's created another industry of social media marketing and understanding search engine optimization. So it really doesn't matter what product you have to sell or what service, because today, more and more people, instead of creating a product and then selling it through a middleman to a retail store, all they do is they go online and they create a website and they offer opportunities to affiliates. And you know what? As an affiliate, you can create an income for yourself far more than you would ever work or be able to do working in a retail store as a salesman. Because here's the reason why. Because as a salesman in the store, you get a set hourly wage. And then if you're lucky, the company may give you commission on a certain amount of sales once you reach that point. And yes, those companies have certain goals that you have to meet. Whereas online, you can create a money mindset just by creating a product where you have distributors that by word of mouth talk to their friends about it. They can bring in 10 to 20 people. You can either make money as an affiliate when your friends become affiliates, or you can just have people that come on and just buy the product because they like it. And what's happening today is we're seeing more and more people look at opportunities to purchase online. I mean, just like you have Black Friday for the retail stores for Christmas, you have Cyber Monday. And every year, Cyber Monday, more and more people are buying products online. He makes his money not just by starting successful businesses and investing in real estate, my primary vehicles, but by buying and selling exotic cars, boats, antiques, and expensive watches. Every time I see him, he is driving a new car. One month, it's a Bentley. The next month, it's a Ferrari. He buys slightly used cars and enjoys them and then turns them over for a profit. He has become an expert in barter and counter trade. He never pays full price for anything. He knows how to get the best price for everything, and he loves the game. And who are we talking about? We are talking about Bernard. Bernard may not have my net worth, but he's got more than enough for the rest of his life. And he seems to enjoy making money much more than I do. I admire that about him. Okay, let's say this again. I admire that about him. I like talking to him about all his recent deals. His excitement gets me excited. It also embarrasses me when I discover that he pays a fraction of what I pay for just about everything. And you know, when you are around people, you want to be around interesting people. Why? Because you want to learn something from them. And if you're around someone that doesn't know or doesn't think in terms or isn't where you are in your thinking, they can bring you down. And I know someone 
that whenever we talk on the phone, I say, I always wonder, why do I talk to this person? Because she rattles on about nonsense, and it just it just leaves me dumbfounded. Because what is she worried about? What everyone else is doing in their life and who they're going with, and when they're getting engaged, and when they're having babies. You know, that to me, if that's where your mindset is, and it's not about being creative and, and being in a different place where, you ha- where you're interesting to talk to, then you're really limiting yourself and who you are and the kind of things that you will get in life. So, what if you don't have them have this mindset? I have another friend, Jeff, who used to be my partner. He was working and making $400,000 a year when he suddenly sold his business and retired. Today, he makes a living teaching Tai Chi. His Income is modest, but he lives in a beautiful house, belongs to a private yacht club, and takes vacations every two months. Like Bernard, Jeff enjoys his life. He works when he wants to, rests when he wants to, and enjoys the best that life has to offer. Jeff's secret is that he knows how to buy the best of everything, for pennies on the dollar. I am always amazed at how he and his wife can meet us in Chicago, Nicaragua, or China, stay at a fine hotels, and do everything we do, but on a budget. I'm convinced that Jeff and Bernard both have very special minds, like Edison, Jobs, and Ford. They think differently than I do. Raw intelligence is not the issue. These guys are smart, but don't think they are any smarter than I am. And anyway, if it were a matter of intelligence, Einstein and a slew of other geniuses would have been wealthy men. I call what Bernard and Jeff have the multiple, the multi-millionaire's mindset. I've also called it the rich mind. This is the first of several that I am writing on this point, how to think like a multi-millionaire. And here's the goal, to discover exactly how they do what they do by figuring out how they think. If you study this, and subsequent essays seriously and implement the suggestions I'll be making, you may be able to upgrade your, your brain to one that will allow you to have that kind of life that you enjoy. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for myself. I've mastered one part of the equation making money through entrepreneurship, but the other part, enjoying a multimillionaire's lifestyle on a limited budget, has so far excluded me. Some preliminary observations. To get started, here are some observations I've made from studying my two friends and from reading about great wealth builders like Jobs and Edison and Ford. A normal person is concerned with protecting their ego. When dealing with a problem he doesn't really understand, he pretends he understands the contributing factors and doesn't try to find out what anyone else thinks a person with a multimillionaire mindset asks questions incessantly. He has no ego when it comes to learning. He knows that the knowledge is power. A normal person has a consumer mentality. He looks 
had a hot new product and thinks about how he would like to own it. A person with the multimillionaire mindset has an entrepreneurial mentality. He looks at it and thinks, how can I produce this or something similar in my own industry? A normal person is wish-focused. He daydreams about making gods of money. A person with a multimillionaire mindset is reality-based. He's always analyzing his own success and the success of others and wondering how he could learn from it. A normal person, when confronted with a challenging idea, thinks of all the reasons why he might not work. A person with a multimillionaire mindset sees the potential in it and dis- disregards the problems until he has a clear vision of, ha- of how it might succeed. A normal person resists change. A person with a multimillionaire mindset embraces it. A normal person accepts the status quo. A person with a multimillionaire mindset is always looking to make things easier, even good things better. A normal person reacts. A person with a multimillionaire mindset is protective. A normal person looks at a successful business owner and thinks, that guy's lucky, or that guy's a shyster. A person with a multimillionaire mindset thinks, what's his secret, and how can I do that? Most importantly, a person with a multimillionaire mindset likes living like a millionaire. He doesn't shortchange himself when it comes to the comfort and luxury, rather than behaving and believing he always, the pain leads to gain. He thinks, if I'm smart, I can have my cake and eat it too. So, what we've been talking about for the last part of this is the multi-millionaire mindset. And what we want you to do is think, and, and, and think how you can change your thinking from the one who looks at what someone else is doing and feeling jealous about it, but how you can turn it around and begin to think of ways that you can create opportunities for yourself. Here's something that that entrepreneurs do that often help them when it comes to growing a business, especially online. Because you know what? There are more opportunities online. If you have a niche in a field that you work with and there are products out there that can help you expand your business, then why not take the opportunity to create ways for you to build a business where you have the ability to earn a lot of money and Let's go back and look at and and analyze this. Okay, a normal person is concerned with protecting his ego. When when dealing with a problem he doesn't really understand, he pretends he understands the contributing factors and doesn't try to find out or ask any more questions. He just barrels in there without thinking. A person with a multimillionaire mindset asks, 
questions incessantly. He, he has no ego and it, when it comes to learning. He knows that knowledge is power. So, remember, knowledge is power. Always be willing to learn. One thing I find is that, remember, everyone has a different personality. And one thing I find is if you grow up in a home where you're constantly being bombarded that the best thing you could do is get a job with a high salary and then retire in 25 years, that's belonging to the 40-40-40 club, which means you work 40 years for 40% for, for 40%, and you retire on 40% of your income. So what's happening here is that when you look at it, the mentality back in the, the, the mid-20th century to the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s, it was during that time that corporations were beginning to grow. And, and if you went into management and you retired after 25 years, you expected to live comfortably on those 401Ks, that Social Security check that you paid into over the years. But what has happened is that with the baby boomer generation, you had more people that were living longer. And when, when corporations merged, there were more people than they needed doing a job, especially during the latter part of the 20th century, you started seeing buyout packages being offered. And many of those employees who took the buyout package would, went into entrepreneurship. And when they did so, that was the beginning of the dot-com era. But everything was so inflated at that time that it was bound to crash and it did. It didn't mean that the concept that they were working with was wrong or that business model was wrong. What it truly meant was that it was not developed. Today, when you look at those same business models on the Internet, especially if the company is reputable and they understand what their product is and how they are going to give back, then that is a company that you need to look at because the opportunities to make an income and to use that affiliate membership to enhance your own products and your own niche, then you have the opportunity to create more ways of building a, a multi-million dollar mindset. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one personalcareercoach.com. And you can sign up for both individual or group coaching and we can work with you to set a plan in action and work it to take your business to the next level.